Hey folks, welcome to another edition of Learn How with Pacific Angler. My name is Jordan Simpson, and you can often find me here in the shop working the floor, helping out customers with all their different fishing needs. In this episode, we're gonna learn about how we set up our guide boats and our guide rods for trolling for salmon, and the terminal setup used to connect from our main line to our flasher. On all our guide boats, we like to run our guide rods using a combination of six ball bead chains as well as sampo or ball bearing swivels. The reason we do this is that at the speeds we troll, and the amount of action that the flashers give to our lures, we want to re reduce line twist. One of the best ways to do that is to use a combination of swivels. Part of the reason why also is that if any algae or dirt or seaweed gets stuck to the first set of swivels, there's always a backup as well. If you take a close look, you'll see that our main line comes out the rod tip through a bead, a bumper, and then connected to the six ball bead chain. From there, we connect that to the sampo or ball bearing swivel, followed by a dual lock. How you connect the six ball to the ball bearing or sample swivel is either through a split ring or some anglers, if you can still find the ones with the split ring on the ball bearing swivel, can connect directly to the six ball. Here in this demonstration, I've used a sp small split ring. A number five or number six works great, though it's not necessary depending on how you're trolling, saltwater salmon or in lakes for kokanee. Next up, I wanna show you how we assemble the setup. So watch closely and follow along. The first thing I wanna do is take a six ball, my split ring, if you can see that, my fingers aren't as nimble, but there we go. And then our sampo or ball bearing. One quick note is that there actually is a front and back end to a ball bearing swivel. This can play very important, especially in our saltwater scene where early season algae can be an issue. Generally always wanna have the closed end, not the open end or this part that actually spins at the front. This helps the water go over it smoothly, as well as stops algae from building up inside it at the end of the day when you dry off your rods, making it act like cement and then it stops spinning. Taking a pair of split ring pliers, all I do is simply open up the split ring right where it opens up. Attach, I like to always put the sample first. And the reason being is that the sample ring itself is a little bigger than the six ball sort of acts as a guide and allows a six ball to come, in, come up right behind it smoothly. Sort of acts as its big brother going first, making the opening easier for the six ball to follow right behind. And there we go. All right, so here we go. The first step's complete six ball split ring and that closed front end of the sampo swivel. Attach the other end, very simple, we take our dual lock, number six is preferred, especially for the saltwater guys out there. Open up both ends, we attach it to the free spinning open end, it gets towed that way through the water, close up, and of course simply main line bead bumper tied on. Come by the shop, you'll see one of our demo models made up already. You can feel how smooth it spins. You'll notice a huge reduce in line twist, as well as your flasher will be able to move more freely, giving it more action underwater. Another question I get asked a lot is, what's in my flasher bag? So we've talked about connecting your main line to the swivels, but of course that goes to a flasher. So just a quick talk through my flasher bag here. So opening up my flasher bag, some of my mainstays are purple blade UV flashers up top, and I, of course, I have my chartreuse blades and green blades. Some of my favorites are the Oki Phantom Flasher, which is newly released, as well as Twisted Sister. They're not the only flashers available, and they're not the only ones that work, but they're some of my go-tos, purples and chartreuses. Some customers have asked me why I favor purple chartreuses and greens. If you take a look at our flasher wall, you'll notice that we're heavily stocked on all three of those colors, as well as a few other fill-in colors as well for certain conditions. Part of the reason why purples, greens, and chartreuses are so heavily prevalent down the local Vancouver scene is that A, it helps mimic this, the genetics of the fish that are running. If you take a look at a lot of our fish, the Fraser River fish and the Capilano fish, a lot of them have a green tinge to their backs as well as purple to their back. This also helps draw in fish. Another reason why purples, greens, and chartreuses are so popular is how deep the light penetration works on them. First light in the morning, you'll see a lot of us run purple or UV blades, especially in low light conditions. Going throughout the day and in high light conditions, chartreuse seems to be a special kick that a lot of fish can't resist. 
Again, purple, UV, chartreuse, or green, you'll notice are very popular down here. And part of the reason has to do with color and light penetration. If you guys have any questions, feel free to come on down or give me a ring here at the shop. And I'll be happy to walk you through it and help you also pick out a few flashes that might complete your outfit. Hopefully that helps. My name is Jordan Simpson. Again, come on in. Have a good one.